All right. The next question is from Jeff. Jeff? Jeff. He says, how much do you help children transition to adulthood? When they graduate college, do you help with insurance, phone payments, car down payment, etc.? My sons will graduate debt free with STEM degrees for some context, which good for them. But what do you think? What advice or thoughts do you have for Jeff? You know, Jeff, this is actually a wonderful question. So good that we're about we're actually about to create some content around this. Like what's the what's the right way to do this and what's the wrong way to do this? Uh, to give you sort of like the cliff notes idea on this, I think there are some questions you have to answer before you can say, how much do you help your children? Because it depends a little bit. It depends a little bit on your situation. Then it depends a little bit on their situation. If you are in the situation to where you're, you've been saving and you're moving towards financial independence and you've done the things that you are supposed to be doing and it's looking like you're going to be able to retire and you're going to be able to have the kind of life that you've been saving for, if you want to make a decision like leaving your child on health insurance until age 26 or allowing them uh, to stay on the cell phone bill or helping them out in other ways, there's nothing wrong with that. But if you trying to help your child is, is only serving to hurt your financial situation, your financial circumstance, you might want to rethink that. Or, and this is even worse, if what you're doing to help your child is actually inhibiting them from developing the skills necessary to be able to grow and flourish on their own, even if you can do it, you may want to second guess, should I be doing this? Well, I would, I, those things, because look, it would be, because we, we deal with a lot of our young financial advisors stay on their parents' health insurance. It's not uncommon just with the way cellular services contracts are structured that the family plans are very effective. Mm-hmm. So it's always, the financial mutant to me is like, don't throw those out, but... The big but is, is that I would use it as a teachable moment. You guys know I'm very philosophical. Is that you got to teach your children to be good with money, and um, and it's this is a perfect opportunity to where you say, hey, look, we're going to keep you on our health insurance because it's probably you know it's more cost effective because I'm already on the family plan and you have a younger sibling, mm-hmm. so it's not going to cost you anything. You're not going to do any participation at work. Your mobile phone, same thing, but. Let's calculate. Let's actually write down how much these two things just saved you. Now, you show me that in your brand new job, I mean, are you funding your Roth IRA? Love it. I mean, because this is, this is not too different than when my daughter was 15 and I started giving her a dollar for dollar match when she started her first job to try to prime the pump of good behavior and saving for the future. Because what you don't want to do is not teach your children to be good with money and then they, they kind of just, you, you become a crutch. You, you, that's the worst thing that can happen is you don't have those conversations. They don't learn how to become independent financially. And then their best life was actually their childhood. Mm-hmm. That's sad to that me. Is sad. And that's something I would encourage every one of you guys, especially you financial mutants that are doing a great job, make sure you're adding moments of scarcity or at least education in your parents' life, I mean, your kid's life, so that they understand the value of what it is to make good financial decisions, what the struggle is to even get to success and wealth, and, you know, and how little goes a long way. Don't forget the three ingredients to wealth, whereas that discipline and deferred gratification is ingredient number one. You got it. That, that's going to create the margin or the money, ingredient number two, that if you give them enough time to let those assets grow, that's the super secret sauce that they're going to have plenty of because their kids are young adults. Make sure that they're putting and executing all three of those key elements, and that way you don't have regrets. Because, and, and by the way, if you go read books like Millionaire Next Door, you know one of the key indicators for success for millionaires is their adult children mm-hmm. are actually somewhat successful too and don't require this economic outpatient right. care for years on years. So you're actually doing yourself a favor and your own success if you teach your children to be good with money.